Good morning everyone. I am Dr. Saili Zoshi and on behalf of the Pregnancy Diabetes Group of the KEM Hospital Pune, today I am going to present our analysis on real life data collected in Diabetes Clinic of the KEM Hospital Pune. So we all are aware that maternal overnutrition as well as the undernutrition are major determinants of offspring adiposity and hyperglycemia. If a mother is undernourished, she is deficit in macronutrients as well as the micronutrients. This results in the mother being undernourished and fetal undernutrition is certain. This undernourished mother gives birth to a baby who is thin fat and insulin resistant. If this baby experiences postnatal undernutrition, overnutrition, then it is at a greater risk for developing obesity and hyperglycemia in later life. On the background, on the other hand, overnourished mother has an excess of macronutrients and she uh, becomes obese and hyperglycemic. This results in excessive transfer of maternal fuels to the growing fetus including glucose, amino acids and lipids. This results in fetal hyperinsulinemia and finally the offspring is born with macrosomia and adiposity. So this increases the risk for later life obesity and hyperglycemia. Rapid transition shifts the balance from undernutrition to overnutrition and results in escalation of the burden of adiposity and hyperglycemia. With this background, my colleagues and I are going to make a series of presentation today. Firstly, we are going to discuss the factors affecting fetal growth and long-term risk for obesity and adiposity in the studies conducted in the diabetes unit of KEM Hospital Pune. In my first presentation, I am going to show a unique separation of effect of maternal size and glycemia <coughs> on neonatal obesity and adiposity. My colleague Ms. Madhura Deshmukh will shed light on the influence of double burden of malnutrition in the mother and neonatal obesity and adiposity. And finally, Dr. Sonali Vagre will tell us more about the determinants of offspring obesity and hyperglycemia in later life. So we all are aware that majority of the studies examining fetal overnutrition are conducted among the western populations. These are characterized by coexistence of maternal obesity and hyperglycemia. Therefore, it is very difficult to separate out the influence of these two exposures on the outcomes. So we planned the study with an objective to investigate the association between maternal hyperglycemia and neonatal obesity adiposity using real life data collected over 30 years in one clinic. Diabetes unit offers diagnosis, treatment and management of pre-gestational and gestational diabetes. The medical records are archived and maternal and neonatal anthropometry is performed. The present investigation is analysis of this real life data collected over 30 years in one diabetes clinic. The exposures were maternal size and degree of hyperglycemia. In view of absence of individual measurements for maternal glucose levels during pregnancy, we used type of maternal diabetes as an exposure. We included mothers, 61 mothers having type 1 diabetes. Similarly, we included 79 mothers with type 2 diabetes, 632 with GDM, and we included a controller control group uh, belonging to 349 women having normoglycemia. Maternal HbA1c measurements are a surrogate for degree of maternal hyperglycemia, and we observed that mothers with type 1 diabetes were the most hyperglycemic, and those with GDM were the least hyperglycemic. With regards to the obesity indicators, mothers with type 1 diabetes were the least obese and type 2 diabetes were the most obese. This unique combination of maternal hyperglycemia and phenotype allowed us an opportunity to separate out the effect of these two exposures on neonatal outcomes. The outcomes were birth weight, crown hill length, ponderal index derived from these two measurements, skin fold thicknesses and abdominal circumferences. The covariates included gestational age, neonatal sex, parity and maternal age. We derived standard deviation scores by adjusting for appropriate covariates and these were used in analysis. Coming to the mother, coming to the results, 
we observed that mothers with type 1 diabetes were the least obese, least centrally obese and least adipose. In contrast, the neonates born in type 1 diabetic pregnancies were the most hyperglycemic, sorry, were the most obese, centrally obese and adipose. To summarize, we observed an increasing trend in case of mothers and a decreasing trend in case of the neonates. Next, we examined the interaction of maternal size and glycemia with response to neonatal obesity and adiposity. We observed once again that offspring born to mothers with type 1 diabetes had highest birth weight, ponderal index, abdominal circumferences, and some of skin folds after adjusting for maternal age, gestational age, and gender of the baby. Next, we performed multiple linear regression to examine the determinants of offspring obesity and adiposity. As expected, we could see an influence of gestational age, sex, and parity on the neonatal outcomes. However, an important observation was that type 1 diabetic mothers had the maximum influence on neonatal obesity adiposity such that babies born in type 1 diabetic pregnancies were heavier by 370 grams as compared to those born in normal glycemic pregnancies. Type 2 diabetes and GDM had a successive lower influence such that babies born to type 2 diabetic mothers were heavier by 265 grams and those in GDM pregnancies were heavier by 200 grams. Civil, similar influence was seen with regard to other outcomes including ponderal index, abdominal circumference, and some of skin folds. Next, we used predictive modeling to plot the neonatal outcomes across the range of normal gestational age. And once again, we found that after adjusting for gender, gestation, and parity, neonates born to thin mothers with type 1 diabetes had consistently highest birth weights, ponderal indices, abdominal circumferences, and some of skin folds. To summarize, in this real life data, we investigated the association between maternal type of diabetes and neonatal size and body composition. We found that our mothers had a unique phenotype, that is mothers with type 1 diabetes were the most hyperglycemic, but they were the least obese. Neonates born to these mothers were the most obese, centrally obese, and adipose. Thus, maternal metabolism appears to be the major driver of neonatal obesity and adiposity. This calls for a stricter control of glycemia before and during pregnancy to reduce neonatal obesity and adiposity. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you, dignitaries. My sincere gratitude to the participants, to our mentor Professor C.S. Yadnik who has conceptualized this study and he has been a great support ever, ever since. My thanks to co-authors and collaborators, staff and especially the pregnancy study group of the Ahmedabad for providing this platform. Thank you.